Hi, everyone. Welcome to Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. And if this is your first time, I am so glad you're here. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm Anna, and I'm going to inspire you with a little dose of what I like to call Mojo. And I named this podcast Monday Morning Mojo because I believe that Mondays are a great opportunity for us to set our mind on the opportunities in front of us, on how we can level up and become better, how we can be effective and create the right plan to achieve what we want most. And as a coach, I love helping people really achieve their goals and to succeed at a high level. And today I want to talk to you about how you can create your most powerful you, how you can create the best version of yourself. And that is by developing something that we call self-mastery. Now, if you haven't heard the term before and you're a little curious about what self-mastery is, I'm going to tell you that when you have developed self-mastery, you have the ability to control yourself pretty much in any situation. And it will allow you to move forward consciously and steadily towards your goals. When you develop self-mastery, you have a deep understanding of who you are. You probably know your purpose and you've worked to develop self-discipline. That self-discipline is probably needed to help you stay focused and accomplish whatever it is that you say you want to do. So when you decide that you are going to take on mastering yourself, you are basically saying that I accept the challenge of really working on the greatest project I could ever start, which is working on yourself, working on me. And so I want to unpack a lot of this today because listen, I get it. If you're listening to this saying, oh my gosh, control myself in every situation and have the discipline and the ability to move forward with this steadfast courage and, and confidence seems like a lot. I, I get it. So what I want to accomplish with you today is really unpack this a little bit and help you understand ways that you can start on your journey of mastering yourself. And I think that's the first thing that I want you to realize is that it is a journey. This is not something you're going to accomplish in just a few days. This takes time and it's really a lifelong commitment. And I think that when I go through with you ways that you can develop self-mastery, you will see that you will really just understand that you're a work in progress. And this is about progress, not perfection. So that's important to note too. So listen, here's the thing. It's never too late to get a hold of this. It is never too late for us to work on becoming our best self. Now, if you're listening and you're in your 20s, I'm really excited for you because you're going to have an opportunity to figure this out and apply it in your life sooner than a lot of us did. And if you're 100 years old, you still have the opportunity to get on this journey and to figure out ways to really open up and create the best version of yourself. And that's exciting. Now, the reason why you want to do this, regardless of how old you are, is because when you can really master yourself and demonstrate that in your career, your business, with your colleagues, friends, you really are showing people this inner strength that you have and this ability that you have to connect with people, to lead people, to really be effective in all areas of your life. And so it's well worth the effort. It is well worth the effort for us to invest time in developing ourselves. Because in doing that, we grow exponentially. And in doing that, we become a happier, more balanced person. And it gives us an opportunity to attract more possibility in our life. So I feel like this is really an exciting way for us to connect with our potential and expose those parts of us that are unique and amazing and really the world is looking for. So now that you understand a little bit about self-mastery and you understand why it's important to put our best self out there, which is really because we want to fight average. I, I, I want to talk about that for a minute. 
You know why this is so important? Because we should want to be more than average every day. And I believe that if you're listening to this podcast and you're probably listening to other podcasts that are focused on personal development, business development, motivation, you're doing that because you know you want more. And you're doing that because you know that you have an opportunity to really live your best life by doing that. And you want to push past your limitations and you want to achieve bigger, greater results. And you just, you need a little bit of a roadmap, right? You listen to these podcasts because you want new ideas. You want the support. You want to connect to resources that can help you do it. And I think that our quest to be more than average is about fighting mediocrity. It's about pushing against being apathetic. It's about grabbing life by the horns, so to speak, and just wanting to show the world what we can do. And by doing that, I think that you encourage other people around you as well. And so I think it's time to stop telling ourselves that good is good enough and get more and more comfortable with wanting to be great and be greater. And I think that it's really about having a life by design rather than a life by default. And that's really why I'm here every week talking to you because I want to encourage you to find ways that you can have your life by design. Not my life by design, your life by design. Because a life by default is really living according to someone else's rules, is really living below your potential. And I think that it's shutting you off from abundance. And so if you get anything out of this episode today, I want it to be that you walk away knowing that you can think differently and you can change whatever it is going on in your life and that whatever you want can become a reality with the right plan, right? Because it starts with the way we think and then we have to follow it with the actions and in order for you to sustain those actions, you have to be able to lead yourself first. We have to be able to master ourselves first. And when I started this episode, I'm curious, when you heard the term self-mastery, I wonder what you thought, right? And as I said, it's about unlocking those secrets about yourself. It's about getting the combination right. And I think that um, self-mastery is a broad term, but it it really does cover many aspects of personal and professional development. And it gives you the opportunity to work in those different lanes. And obviously, when you're on this path to developing self-mastery, it really needs to start with a vision. So the first tool I'm going to share with you today on creating a, a more powerful you is it has to start with some vision. You have to be clear about what you want your life to look like. And I'm going to share a a tool that I've shared with you many times before, and we'll put a link in the show notes for you to download it. And that's the wheel of life. And in case you have never worked with the wheel of life, basically it gives you a helicopter view of your entire life as a whole. And the wheel is broken down into different segments. And those segments are our different priorities in our life, like our career, our relationships, our health, our finances, even fun is on there. And this is an assessment tool, the wheel of life. I like to do this every quarter for myself. I use this with my coaching clients a lot. And you can use it as often as you want, but I would recommend no more than monthly. But again, once a quarter could be the right pace for you to really give yourself an opportunity to see change and transition. Because what you'll do with the wheel is assess how fulfilled you feel in each area. As I said, the wheel is broken down into segments and you take one area at a time and you just rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being I'm I'm totally fulfilled in this area. And as you move around the wheel, you form almost a new wheel, right? Inside that wheel, based on where you are shading in each section. 
And then it'll give you an opportunity to see how balanced you might be feeling at that moment. And I doubt many people are 100% balanced in every area of their life ever, because we also know that what we focus on will expand. And so while you put a lot of time and energy into one area of your life, maybe you just started a new business. Maybe you're really super focused on your relationship right now. You're on a new health plan, right? So when you put a lot of time and energy in, in a couple of areas of your life, there's always going to be something that isn't getting as much attention. And so that's why I love the wheel, because it helps you not only see where you need to put your time and energy, but it can also start to reveal more about your vision because it will give you an opportunity to think about what 10 represents to you. What does a 10 in your business look like? What does a 10 for your health look like? And then you can set some goals, which is the second part of creating a powerful you after you have a vision. What are your goals? And in achieving your goals and getting towards higher levels of satisfaction, who are you becoming in the process? Guys, that's why goals are powerful. Yes, we set a goal to say, I want X amount of dollars in sales for my business, or I want to earn X amount of dollars in revenue, or I want this much in the bank, or I want to lose this much weight in 60 days, whatever the goal is. And it is about where you want to be at the end of that time period. But what really is more transformational is how you develop and what you learn about yourself in the process of getting to the goal. Because one of the first things that you're going to probably develop in the achievement of any goal is some discipline. Because you're going to start to do things differently than you were before. And I think that it's not vision that we lack, right? Because chances are exactly where you want to go in life. That vision is going to give you some direction but then the goals are really the roadmap that helps you go from point A to point B. And so the clearer your vision is in relationship to your goal, the better you can be at creating the actions, the habits, creating the, the path to get to where you want to be. And that's what really brings you to achievement. As you're developing self-mastery, you're becoming clearer about vision for yourself and for possibly anything you're involved in, and you're becoming much better at goal setting and goal achieving. Now, the other thing that starts to happen as you develop self-mastery is you really start to become more aware of your emotions and how your emotions play a major part in the way you show up in the world. And I think people who have developed strong self-mastery are also mastering their emotions. They realize that they can't let their emotions control them, that we control our emotions. And if you could focus on something positive every day, be grateful for things, even something small, right? It could just be a beautiful day outside. Just those feelings of gratitude, those positive feelings, the perspective or outlook you have that's more positive than negative, that sets a tone for your day. That starts to put you on a path to how you want to feel. And so as we do that more, it just becomes easier and it grows. And so suddenly we look at any opportunity, any goal, any obstacle, any challenge with more optimism and positivity and we come with solutions rather than focusing on the problem. And so again, people who are developing self-mastery are much better at managing conflict and overcoming obstacles because they can change the negativity or they can change the narrative around what's going wrong into, they restructure it into figuring out a solution. And they're turning the negativity into something much more positive, something much more productive. And that really is allowing you to show up as a much more powerful version of yourself. We're talking about ways to create a more powerful you. And I think that another way that you can do that 
is by really getting into the practice of doing a, re a reality check. Now, I shared a little bit about the Wheel of Life, and I said that was an assessment tool because it will help you take the helicopter view of your whole life, break it down into different parts, and give you an opportunity to assess where you are and give you an opportunity to assess how fulfilled you feel. And as you get that picture, you can then make decisions about what would make it a 10 for you and start to set goals to move the needle forward. But before you can set the goal and know what you need to do, you need to have the reality check. The wheel of life is part of that. That's, as I said, an assessment tool. And then I think there are some questions that I want to share with you that can help you really focus on what is the reality of any situation I'm in. And number one, it's you probably guessed it. Number one is, okay, what is the objective here? What is the goal? What is the objective? So whenever you need to really assess your reality, you got to get back to and get, get connected to what is the outcome I'm looking for, right? That's number one. And then of course, number two, you have to look at, well, how am I doing compared to the goal? If I say the goal is X, where am I in the process? Am I on track or not? So the second step to checking in to your reality is to ask yourself, how am I doing with the goal? You can do this in your business, in your professional career. You can do this in your personal life. You can do this with anything. And then here's the third thing. How do you feel about it? Because as we just went over, we want to learn how to master our emotions. So we can't master something. We can't even change something if we aren't aware of it first. So this question is powerful. How do you feel about it? And just really look at that honestly. And if you could move out of judgment, in other words, if you could move out of saying to yourself, oh, I, I just, I feel terrible. I can't believe I'm off track. This is always the way it is with me. All those negative feelings that come up and all those labels we put on ourselves and judgments. And if we could just move away from that and ask ourselves more about how we feel without the labeling, we can understand what those emotions are probably doing to our thinking and how our thinking is shaping our reality. So then we have the ability to possibly shift it and change it. So the third question, as I said, is how do we feel about it? And then the fourth question you can ask yourself in terms of checking in on your reality is what would my future look like if I didn't achieve the goal? What would my future look like if I didn't achieve the goal? I love this question because it starts to create a little pain. You guys, let's face it, right? I've been there too. When you're on a path to a goal, especially if the goal was a big one, especially if it was a long-term goal, right? It takes some time. In the journey to achieve the goal, we get lost sometimes. We can get overwhelmed. We might find ourselves off track and we might find ourselves saying things like, I give up. It's just easier if I stop now. The negative self-talk comes in and all the reasons why you shouldn't do it or can't do it or you don't need to do it to make yourself feel better about being off track. But then if you asked yourself, what would my future look like if I never achieved the goal? you'll connect back to motivation because when the pain of not getting there is greater than the pain or discomfort of trying to accomplish it, you'll see things change. When you realize you could be missing out on something that you really want, it, it's going to give you an opportunity to recommit to your motivation, to recommit to your vision and then ask better questions of what you need to do. Maybe you need a different strategy. Maybe you need to do more of something or less of something. Maybe you need some help. Maybe you need some coaching, some mentoring, some resources, right? There's a lot of things that could be available to you that would help you. And so that is why you want to really do check in again. Reality check is, are, are you really sure you want to give up on this? Because 
you might have a lot to lose if you didn't pursue the goal because there's so much to gain when you get there. So that would lead to the next question, which could be, what does my life look like when I achieve this goal, right? Or what does my life look like when I start to really describe a life by design? What, what does that mean for me? And if you could create that vision, a compelling vision of what you want your life to look like in a month, in six months, in a year, in three years, that compelling vision creates a different set of emotions that you can control and use to your opportunity, to your advantage, to really get back on track and feel inspired to have that goal become a reality. So those are some questions that I wanted to share around just checking in with reality and all of this, everything we're talking about here today, it just starts with mindset. It starts with mindset, which is why I believe that we have this chance every week, really every day. Listen, you don't have to wait till Monday to have a reality check or to shift your thinking or to examine and assess your life. It's great to say that we have this um, perspective fresh on a Monday morning for the rest of the week, but we can do this any time of the day, any time of the week, any time of the month. You always have the power to say, stop, or that's enough. I want to examine what's going on. I want to step into a reality check. I want to take more control of my time, take more control of my thoughts, of my feelings. And I want to commit to becoming the best version of me. I want to commit to self-mastery. And every one of us can do it. Every one of us can do it. We just need two things. We need to shift the way we think. And we probably need to shift what we're doing because it's in the doing that we become and in the becoming that we figure out ways to do new things and achieving self-mastery might take some time. And I'm not going to lie. It might be hard to, to sometimes, right? It might take hard work, but it is so worth it because you're worth it. And as I said, you're the greatest project you could ever invest time into and as you do and you start on this path of becoming the best version of yourself you become a different individual because you think different and you act different and you discover all these wonderful things about yourself that you can use to create amazing results not just for yourself but for the world around you now I know that many of you are feeling excited about this. I do. And I know that many of you are feeling like this is inspiring you. And I, that's what I want. Because when you feel inspired, you want to take action. You want to use that as a spark that can ignite something. So if you're driving right now, I know it's hard. You can't take notes. But I want you to think about it. Come back to this podcast. Think about it. What is it that is creating a spark for you? What, where is that spark going to start to lead you? What areas of your life do you want to start putting some more time and attention to? What areas of your life do you want to develop more discipline in? Because if you can focus on one area at a time, if you can focus on one goal at a time, then you will create this domino effect. And as you become good in one area and more focused in one area, you will see how you can apply that to other parts of your life. And it will start to change you. And that will start to give you an entirely new perspective about life. And it is the path to what we call be, do, have. Because you start to become someone in the process as you're doing new things and doing more things that are in alignment with what you say you want so that you can achieve the things that you want. It's the be, do, have cycle. And I think as we're probably running out of some time together today, some final thoughts are, I believe we do all know what we want. Even when I've worked with people who have come to me and said, 
I have no idea what my goals are. I have no vision for my business. I have no vision for what I want my life to be. I don't know anything about my purpose or potential. And I do believe that at that moment, that individual is feeling that way. Yet what I know to be true as a coach is that we all have the answers inside. We just sometimes need someone to help us connect with it, unlock it, discover it. And so I leave you with this message because I want you to realize how powerful you already are. And even if you realize you have a little work to do in mastering yourself, in learning how to really lead yourself at a higher level, as you learn to set goals and be more in control, right? Self-control around your actions, your thoughts, your emotions. As you start this path, you start to really understand the power you already have. And that is really where we stand more in our truth. And we create this connection to our potential. And your purpose is there. I feel like your purpose has been assigned to you at birth. I feel we all have a purpose here on this planet. And it's just our goal to figure it out. And then once we figure it out, we want to get on the road to living up to that purpose. And whether it is something that will put you in front of millions of people or not, believe this, you still have the ability to affect people, change lives, to inspire, to teach, to lead. And you'll do that for millions of people in your lifetime. You just might not know it. Because what you do for one person, that one person may turn around and do for others. And so you are the spark. You are the spark that you need in order to start this journey to self-mastery. You are the spark. So connect with that today and make some decisions about what you can do to start to create change and start to develop a better understanding of yourself and how you operate and understand that whatever you do, you have the control and you have the power. You can start your day over at any moment. You can certainly make a decision every day when you get out of bed about the kind of day you want to have. And if it doesn't start going the way you wanted, you can call a timeout. You can collect your thoughts. You can check in on your emotions. You can make some decisions about how you want to feel, about how you want to show up, how you want to respond, how you're acting. You can change it really in a minute. Not saying it'll be easy, but you can. And you can change your day again, anytime. That's how much power and control we have. Mastery basically starts with a decision. Because in that moment that you decide, this is the day I want to have. This is how I want to show up. Or decide to change it. You're saying that you have this ability to master yourself. So it starts with a decision. And it's a decision that says... I want to put the time and effort into achieving excellence and rejecting mediocrity because I want to live an exceptional life. I want to live an exciting life. I want to live a life that is beyond average because I deserve it. So I trust you got something out of today that was powerful and whatever it was, Whatever message you heard today, maybe it was about the fact that it's never too late. Maybe it was understanding more around how to become the best version of yourself. Maybe it was the five steps to checking in on your reality. Maybe it's the wheel of life tool. Whatever it was, I want you to make a decision that you're going to really dig into it and use it because we can't just think our way to different. We have to do something about it. And so my mission is that Whatever we talk about here every week is inspiring you to do it, is inspiring you to do something that makes a profound difference in your life. So go out there today and decide what kind of day you want to have. Make it the best day you can. And I will see you here next time. And again, I thank you for joining me week after week. 
And if you found this to be helpful, share it. Share this episode with someone who could definitely use to hear what we talked about today. Share this episode with someone who would like to understand more about how to break through to their next level and share this with them so that they can decide too how they can become the best version of themselves, right? How they can create a more powerful you. All right, everyone, I appreciate you so much. I am sending you lots of positive vibes today. Go out there and have a great one.